Ah, uh, yes, my favorite place to start of all jobs is up in an attic. At least it's winter months. And it's not too cold out. You can see some frost there. This attic needs more uh, ventilation. But besides the point, today we're going to drill some holes for some mini split systems, some lines to get those poked through. And they're going to go down below. And I'm going to go ahead and start marking this out so I can actually put my indoor unit, my head unit, on the wall here. It comes with a template. Makes it pretty simple and easy. Get the bracket. Make sure I hit those studs. Drill a hole for the lines to actually go through. Come on the exterior wall here and drill a hole all the way through. Put my nice little pretty ring on there. Go ahead and throw this system up. Get those lines pushed through. Ah, uh, yes. Take off that nice plastic. Make it look clean. Make sure it's nice and straight there. Go ahead and hook up my electric. This is pretty simple. They have it lined out. Number one goes one. Number two goes two. Number three goes three. Real easy to wire. Nothing to it. Then I go outside to my outdoor unit here. And I'm going to install this bracket to keep it off the ground. I wouldn't have to do an actual slab foundation. Really like these brackets. Real simple to use. Fit most units. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in them because they really come in handy. And I just make sure I found my studs, knew where they were. And I just get the, each one of these brackets has four lag screws. I go straight into a stud. So this is going to be as solid as can be and works a lot better than doing a concrete slab. It'll just keep it off the ground. So that's a bonus there. So these work out really well. And I highly recommend you use these if you're going to do a mini split system or at least the outside unit here. And once you get those brackets installed, it comes with these little rubber washers to kind of keep it off the metal itself. Helps with vibration as well. Get those attached to the bottom of these brackets here. Then once I get these on, then I'm ready to lift this up. And it wasn't too difficult, but get it up there on there and get it squared and leveled away and get those bolts coming through there. And I'll just attach these down with my drill. Get them nice and snug. You'll see that rubber washer kind of... You kind of scrunch down just a little. That's kind of what you're looking for. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want it too loose that those washers are going to work loose. But just enough that it kind of crunched it just a little bit there. And that will be perfect. Make sure it's level. And it's good to go. And now we've got this outdoor unit installed. And after that, we can start working on hooking up these lines up to the unit itself here. And come in there and kind of make it look pretty. And um, I actually have some of that UV tape I'll wrap around it as well. Um, but kind of take my time here and make it look pretty. Add a little bit extra because... The land owner might want to move this later on down the road, so I kept a little bit of extra slag instead of cutting it down and reflaring the fittings here. So makes it easier, but it's out of the way. You'll never see it. Once I get those rolled up, I'll take off this plate. That way I can get those electrical lines and also those copper lines hooked up here. Now, when it comes to wiring these up, it's almost as easy and dummy proof as it can be. It's marked one, two, three. We'll look for the wire that's marked one, two, three. Puts ground on, puts a little strap in here, and that's one unit already ready to go. And here's a little video that popped on that UV tape there to kind of protect it from the sun. And then I got my actual main power cord here. Um, very simple. You got your red, you got your black, and you got your green. You got your two hots in your ground. This is 220, so of course you don't have a neutral. Um, and then I'll hook that up to a disconnect, which is very important to put a disconnect for these just for safety of working on them. Um, this is right here, kind of a close-up here. Got them all stripped out there, red, green, and the black there. And I'll strip them out and just put them on the line one, line two there. And it's just as simple as that. Nothing too difficult. Again, most of this is very simple. Um, there's a 220 system, so there is no neutral. You just have your two power legs going straight all the way back to the panel on a double pole breaker. Once you got all those lines hooked up and everything, let's put this back on here. Get this protective sleeve on here. So today I'm going to show you how you can vacuum a mini split system here. And it, it may sound scary, but it's actually a really simple job you can do as long as you know what you're doing. I'm going to show you step by step here. That way you can do your own vacuum system. Now, the first thing you gotta do is get a vacuum pump, and I just got the cheapest one on Amazon that had the best reviews, and I'll put a link in the description, that way you don't have to do all the research. Now, first thing you're gonna do is take off these protective caps here. This is where you actually hook up. There's a blue, a yellow, and a red hose. You're only gonna need the blue and the yellow. Don't worry about the red for this application, just these two. You're gonna take the blue hose and attach it onto that cap you just took off, and this will allow you to vacuum in. And then you'll take that other hose, which will be the yellow hose, and actually hook it up to the machine here. There's only one spot to put it, so you really can't mess it up. So you have your yellow hose hooked up in the middle, your blue hose going all the way to the actual unit where you're gonna vacuum out the system. All you gotta do is just turn it on and wait for about 20 minutes, and you should have a negative reading here on the gauge, just like this. Come back 20 minutes later, turn this blue valve off first. That's important. Turn the blue valve off first, then turn off your pump, 
and just wait for 20 minutes to make sure that you do not have a drop in pressure. Now, after 20 minutes, if you don't have any drop in pressure, take these other protective caps off the front, get your Allen wrench, and just slowly open it while everything's still hooked up, and they'll get your antifreeze in there, and that is very important that you do that. This is called a de minimis release. It needs to be done so no air goes back into the system. After that, you put your caps back on, and you are good to go, and you have a charged system, and there should be no issues after this. Now I'll come back out and put on the caps over these lines, but that's pretty much it, and installing a mini split system.